here on this Tobacco University video, the procedures for the Counting Calories Lab will be covered. Okay, so here we're going to go over the basics of the Calculating Calories Lab for food. What we're looking at here is our setup. We have a ring, a ring stand with a ring on it. We have an aluminum can with some nails in it to help support it. In addition, we have a thermometer, we have a wooden skewer, we have some weigh boats, we have a food item to be testing, we have a balance, we have some matches, and we have a graduated cylinder so we can precisely measure 50 milliliters of water. We, we may also want to add a timer uh, to this setup. So I'm going to go through the basic instructions here. Okay, so now our next step is going to involve putting the water here in our can. So I'm going to go through, add our water right to the can that way, and then we're going to take the temperature of that water. Taking our 50 milliliters of water, and adding it to our can right there. Now how do we get the initial mass of our food item? So we take a weigh boat, we put it on our balance, we make sure we let it kind of settle out, we tear the balance, and we put our food item in it. In this case, it's going to be a marshmallow. Here we're going to take our reading at 0 0.86 grams. So that's it. 0 0.85 grams. So now we've got that, we're going to take our food item, take our wooden skewer, and very carefully, we want to be able to go through and attach that right there. Okay, that's what we're going to use for our next step. Now we've just added the water to our can. We're going to take our thermometer, making sure not to keep it at the bottom of the can to make sure we're getting the temperature of only the water there. So I'll put it at the bottom and just raise it up just a little bit. And then we're going to take a reading. In this case, our reading is right around 22.4 degrees Celsius. So 22.4 degrees Celsius, that'll be our reading there. Now comes the fun part. So we're going to grab our matches here. Make sure you're wearing your safety goggles. We have our food item. We're going to be looking at placing that approximately, oh, about that far under the can. We want to make sure we're not contacting the can, we want to make sure we're not too far. We want it close, but we still want an ability for oxygen to get in there to create an efficient burn. So I'm going to leave that down there for a second. We should also be, if we had another person, it'd be easier to time how long this burns for. So we take our match, we light our match, and remember, the hottest part of the flame is kind of towards the top. So we want to be using that to help kind of get our marshmallow here to catch on fire. And we kind of want to rotate it through, blow that out, keeping our food item lit. And you can see right here that nice burn that we're getting. If it does fall, you try to grab it again and again, try to rotate it as best as possible. Different food items will have a little, little issue there. And you can hear that the flame just went out. So I'm going to take this marshmallow now that's burnt, grab a wave up, put it in there. Be careful that metal part of the skewer is going to be quite hot. Kick that off. Okay, it gets a little sticky on the inside. So I'll get that up there. And before we weigh that, we want to make sure we're getting the temperature of our water relatively quickly. So we go through, and now we're going to assess the temperature of the water. Temperature water has gone up as would be expected to 27.3 degrees Celsius. 27.3 degrees Celsius. Again, keep in mind you don't want the very bottom of the can, at the bottom just lift up that little bit. So you're getting the temperature of the water itself. Then we're going to come back over. So we got to get the mass of that food item. So I put an empty weigh boat here. We're going to zero that out. Take our burnt food item, put that in there. And now we're going to have a mass of only 0 0.60 grams. Our next food item on the wooden skewer. I've got my matches ready to go. We're going to look at trying to time this as well. So I go through, I light my match. And remember, we want to keep it at that higher point in the match. That's where the flame is the hottest. Work it back and forth. We'll slowly rotate it. And 
keep it just under that can there. Again, rotate it so we get as much of a burn as possible out of it. You can see all that carbon buildup on the aluminum can. You don't want it right, you want to allow a little bit of a gap there to be able to allow some oxygen for those flames to go. You can see this is burning much longer than our other item. But it goes, it's about completely burnt out. See, there'll be a little bit of smoke left. You want to let that cool just for a little bit. Get our weigh boat and kind of make sure it's not too, too hot. Usually they cool down pretty quick. We're going to watch the metal. Kick that there. We can get that weighed in a moment. That's not going to change too much. As we're going to go through and get our temperature of our water. And in comparison to when it started, while this one did have a longer burn time, we're now looking at 42.9 degrees Celsius. So that's kind of that nice evaluation there in the change. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of a basic idea of how to run the Cal Thermometry Lab and looking at burning food and being able to now take this data that we've collected with the temperature change of the water and to be able to go through some math calculations to determine how much energy was in various food items. Now you can repeat this with many different food items. You're not just limited to what I've shown you here. The wood skewer is a good idea to be able to support it safely. Uh, so keep in mind that this is a great setup. And you should also be doing repeated trials because while there'll be different masses for your food, it should all come out in the math because of the calculations you're doing. But always good to have repeated trials. It's fun to think about too, if you have a collection of snacks, which food item do you think has the most energy to be able to go through and compare to see if your hypothesis or your prediction was correct.